Well, after 57 seasons and more than 9,000 baseball games, the A's have played their last contest representing the city of Oakland. It happened today right there in Seattle. Full disclosure, this is post game live. However, it's pre recorded. We had some studio conflicts, so we don't even know the result of today's baseball game. Just want to be fair if we don't reference something that just happened, the reason why is because this show is being recorded. Brody Brazil with Dave Stewart for one last time here, presented by Toyota. I'm realizing the finality of this, the conclusion of something we've known and expected for a while. But I think, Stu, what really kicks in on a day like today is that the tragedy that we've just experienced. We'll probably be talking about this for the rest of our lives. Well, we're from Oakland. Uh, we're Oaklanders. We're from the East Bay. Um, Brody, you especially have grown up on the Oakland Athletics. Yeah. Uh, and I, before you, by some 18 years. I know. <laughs> Dad, I know. Grew, grew up on the Athletics as well. And we both carry some memories of things that have impacted our lives. Um, things that we will remember all of our lives. And so um, today is, is, is the day that this team, as we know it, becomes something totally different. I think it's still hard to process, hard to digest the questions of why and still how. And for those of you out there who still have reservations about where this team might go and ultimately where they might land and end up, I think someday all of your reservations and all your questions and all your predictions, they might be proved right. However, at this point, it's hard to know and it's hard to understand. It's, it's hard to really see the clear path of exactly where this team is going to go. And I think it would be easier to say farewell to something if you knew exactly how it was going to play out. But I think that's the hard part is that we're saying goodbye to something and we don't exactly know when, where, and how it's going. I mean, there's so many... <laughs> There's so many pit stops. There's there's a, a three-year stay in Sacramento um, in a minor league facility. I um, mean, I'll say this a thousand times because I strongly believe it. It's almost like you're 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 royalty, um, but you've been you've been reduced to not the castle but to a, a, a shack. Minor league baseball for the Oakland A's organization to me is is demeaning. It's 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 embarrassing for the organization and. And what we stand for as an organization, and, and in no way, form, or fashion should should the Oakland Athletics, the franchise, be playing in a minor league facility for three years. Yeah. And then there, you know, there is uncertainty. At least there's uncertainty circling circling around Las Vegas. I think I'm one of few people that believe that when they get to Las Vegas, they're going to play in Las Vegas. I don't think that that is something that's going to fall through. I don't think there are going to be any loopholes to that deal. I think that the A's will eventually end up in Las Vegas. It's the in-between um, that I have an issue and a problem with, um, strongly have an issue and a problem with. I, I look at this organization as royalty and um, playing in Sacramento in a minor league facility, um, struggling to find out where your home clubhouse is. And if your home clubhouse is going to be in left field or wherever it's going to be, mm -hmm. um, these are major league athletes from, a, 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 as I said, a, a franchise with, with the legacy and the history that we have, world championship playoff games. Uh, it, it just seems like um, that's not the right path. Royalty, I agree. But my question remains, too, will they ever turn a corner and be one of the clubs that gets players, spends on players, keeps those players. How many iterations of the Oakland A's have we seen in recent decades that would have been something tremendous if only they had stayed? Usually teams, they try so hard to acquire these players. The A's never had a problem with getting that next crop and that mm -hmm. next batch of great players. They just really couldn't ever keep them together. Let me get into our turning point that is presented by Toyota. We'll revisit that final game at the Coliseum on Thursday, Stu, and I feel like that was the emotional hangover that we we're still kind of suffering from several days ago now. I also want to say as we view all these fans, including the legend right field Will and Banjo Man, this is not the fault of the fans. They're going to feel the worst out of this because they're not going anywhere and their loyalty has remained through different teams and players and ownerships and front offices. The Coliseum has stayed the same. The green and gold colors have stayed the same. The fans have stayed the same over all the years. And I know this is... This is an easy time for fans to 
maybe feel some of the heat, feel some of like the blame that comes from somewhere. I don't even think that blame is justified, but my point is a reminder, and I'll keep this reminder going. If you're a fan and you're feeling that way, you shouldn't feel that way. You had no say in this, you had no call in this. You did your best when it mattered most, and this was probably going to happen one way or another. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, and, and you're exactly right when we're talking about the fans um, at the Oakland Colise Coliseum and the fans in Oakland. Um, the diehard fans, the people who have been coming out here um, to the ballpark, to the stadium, to root the Oakland teams uh, that go back, you know, before my day, um, when I was a fan, yeah. um, this, has, this has nothing to do with them. It's not their doing. They've been supportive. Um, and I, I'll say this a thousand times. I've seen it and I've felt it, um, the, the impact that the fans have had on me as a player and my teammates. These are the best fans in baseball. And every city says that about their fans. But every city um, doesn't have the opportunity to prove that. We've proven that through regular play, season play, Charles Finley, the Haas family, um, Steve Schott, but I would call that the Billy Bean era because Billy Bean, um, for what he was given and how he constructed this team and, and what he put together to keep this team uh, competitive, um, keeping them in the, in the, in the light of a, of a playoff, having that opportunity, I think was genius, and um, so you have to take your cap off to him. And quite frankly, Brody, if we're talking about free agency and how that's going to work out, uh, if, if you're looking at what's happened with David Force, you can see that he's got this team going in the right direction. Absolutely right now the, he the, does. The question is, as you said, will this be will a this turnover be, again? Will there, will there be a spending period? The team has said that they will spend. Right. Um, the team has said that they're going to do what it needs to do to 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 bring a championship. Unfortunately, not to Oakland, but um, to their next landing place. And so, what what has to happen and what remains to be seen is what will the organization do under um, the current ownership of, of of John Fisher? Well, everybody talks about Billy Bean and the way Moneyball has been made so famous and obviously into a movie. If you're really thinking about movies, though. At this juncture today, Major League feels a lot more like the Oakland A's than, than Moneyball ever did, even though Moneyball was crafted after the A's.